the new battery for the Focati. I had all but given up on this battery. I walked out in the garage and there it was. Another one of these Amorgi chargers. I got a few of those. The dual QS10 connectors. They seem super long this time. I don't know why. Yeah, the last ones were very short. Gonna take out the EVE40P. Gonna put in the EVE50PL. These are both 96 volt 16P 26S batteries. The old one is a 64 amp hour, and Amorge told me it's good for 400 continuous line amps and 640 peak at 10 seconds. But we know that's wrong. Close enough. The new battery with the improved cells, they're calling it 80 amp hours. So yeah, it's gonna improve the range quite a bit. They're also telling me 960 amps for 10 seconds peak. That's a lot. And oddly enough, it says 420 amps for the regular continuous line current, which I don't get because the math doesn't work there either. That's all right. We're gonna math it out and we're gonna do it right. To run this battery continuous until it's dead, that EVE40P cell, you can't discharge it at a higher rate than 20 amps or it'll get past 60 degrees Celsius. That's the shutoff point in the BMS. We don't wanna heat the batteries up higher than 60. So we'll use 20 amps. 20 amps times 16, that gives me 320 amps continuous. Equates to about 600 to 800 peak amps for a very short time when you start looking at the heat and the voltage sag. But if I go to a 50 PL battery, it takes me to 30 amps till discharge, till dead, without exceeding 59 degrees Celsius. That's a game changer. That means I can run 480 amps continuous. Not only that, but my peak power now jumps up to 900 to 1000 amps for a short duration. The new battery, by the time I got it to my door, $2,480. The old battery with the EVE 40Ps, by the time I got it to my door, $1,817. That's like a what, $600 upgrade? We'll see if it's worth it. Same controller, same settings. I'm not gonna change anything. I'm gonna see if just the battery makes a difference. ND 96 1200 controller, that gives me 600 maximum line amps. That's what it's set to. I'm gonna leave that right where it is. I know I can't overstress the new battery, if I can overstress that battery. And I'm gonna run it like this and see if I improve. Something I will need to do though is set my BMS up on the new battery the same as the BMS on this battery so I'm not limiting myself and not even realizing it or giving myself more power to test the two batteries and I can adjust this BMS later after this test when I tune the bike. I've plugged my charger in so I can Bluetooth to the new battery. I'm wanting to mimic exactly what I had on my other battery. 26S64 and the new battery is a 26S 80 amp hour. Understand, these two batteries are the exact same size, physical dimensions, and the exact same number of cells. The only difference I'm testing is the type of cells, 40P versus 50PL. Even though I'll change them later when I tune it, but I just want to see if just these cells make it any different. So 320 for 15, 640 for a thousand, 610, 520, and five. So those are the same. I'm also gonna screen record the Ant BMS with the 40P battery, and then I'm gonna screen record this one. Then I'll compare those two at the end so you can see the difference in battery sag, temperature, volts, things like that on the 40P and the 50PL. And I'll just do a comparison side by side for those two. And there'll be eighth mile runs also. Let's see where I left off last time. Now let's put the new battery in. We're not expecting big improvements. I've got the same discharge settings in the BMS and I've got the same settings on the controller. This is more just out of curiosity. The big difference we're gonna find out when we compare the two batteries back to back on the BMS page. <laughs> yeah, it does, definitely does not feel any faster. Yeah, I mean, it's about the same. It's pretty darn close. 856, and it was doing 855, 463, and I think it was doing 466. So, negligible. We'll call that the same. No difference in the 40P and the 50PL with all the same settings installed. So, would this be a good upgrade? If you're going to keep the same controller, no. 
it would not be a good upgrade. But if you're planning on upgrading controllers like I am, then it would be. That's what we're going to test next when we do the battery test, is if it'll be a good upgrade for a bigger controller. But so far, definitely not worth the $600. I'm not making up this upgrade though. This is what some experts are telling me to do so I can dump more amps to get this thing to be faster. And to get this thing to dump more amps, I have to get a bigger controller. Right now I'm limited to 600 line amps and that's what's killing me on this bike. When some of you guys were reviewing my graph page, you were telling me that even if I went to a bigger controller, this battery would not dump the amps I need. So I gotta get something that'll run higher line amps or the controller upgrade will not be worth it. So I'm going to charge my battery up, then we'll go out and do the back-to-back -back BMS test. I've already tested the 40P. I've got the 50PL in here now, and we're going to see how they compare. A few of you astute observers may see some fishy business when you look at the graph page. So what it is is I charge up my house sitting around 109 volt. Looks like right now I'm at 108.3. Then I have to drive out to somewhere where I can go 90 miles an hour to do an eighth mile run. I usually let off the throttle at about 80. That's usually the eighth mile and then it goes to about 90. But then when you look at the graph page I'm usually down to 104, 105 volts. You'll see in this last one I was 104.8. I'm doing the draggy run with the fullest charge I can, that 105 or 106 volts. After the draggy run, I turn around and I just do a graph page run. So my battery is already lower than it was for the draggy run. And then the graph runs more for just fun. But on this BMS run that I'm doing with the battery, I went back to the house and I charge up again. So by the time I get out there, I'll be 105 or so volts. We'll see what I get. I'm trying to drive conservatively out there. Because I want the BMS run to be accurate. Because that's what you're curious about, is what the Ant BMS does compared to the other battery. Now this is just the run with the 40P in it right now. I'm going to overlay the run with the 50PL in it so I have no idea what it's going to do but it's going to be an eight second run or so so you can see the differences in real time. And it's showing 100% 107.45 volts. I'm just going to do a fast takeoff. We're going to watch volt sag and temperature things like that. I'm going to put the brakes on. I'm going to try to repeat the same thing with the other test. I'm going to do a second takeoff. That's from a rolling start, full throttle. Running full throttle now all the way up to the past 80 miles an hour. Back off the throttle. Turn around at this driveway here. Full throttle again. About 80 miles an hour, I'll back off. There it is, we'll coast. Full throttle again. All right, we're gonna coast. And we're going to turn in on this road. While the performance was not that much improved because I was using the same controller with the same settings, the battery did perform a lot better. And that you see from this BMS test here. So the potential for this battery with the 50PLs is much greater. You can see the 40P increased 10 degrees in the drag race and then 16 degrees by the time I was done riding, where the 50PL only went up 1 degree during the drag race and 7 degrees after I was done riding. The voltage sag on the 40P was 14.71 compared to 7.9 on the 50PL. Both batteries started around 107 volts and both batteries ended around 105 volts, but the results were pretty different. So I think the 50PL can handle a larger controller and that would be the upgrade I would do next.